you already know what it is. We're back finally at last. It took a minute, but we're we're here now. <laughs> Join with me on the show today. Nothing beats experiences. The one and only Cash Page. How you doing? Woo! No way. I'm you, doing. <laughs> you feeling good? Feeling great. How are you? Soundtrack to my life, correct? Yes. Let's start there. Why the title? Um, because I had to change the name. I had to change the name. <laughs> it was originally the fall off, but soundtrack to my life, um, it was kind of like one of the, you know, whenever you make in a project name, you want to kind of just throw little things in there. Mm -hmm. But like, hmm, my life is always on a journey. For like these songs that I'm making are kind of just like a replication of that. The reason I asked is because I feel like soundtrack to my life and I saw the cover art, I see, you know, and I know all the things that you got going on. This week in specific, uh -huh. you're, you're hitting the city heavy. You you being, you know, someone that's from the city, like how important is it to represent that within this project and really in general, like just to embody that because the cover art, you have the skyline, you announce the tour, you're, you're right there in the skyline, you know, like I see the tattoo on your hand. <laughs> You know, like how how important is it for you to be that representation? Um, I think right now it's just putting the flag in it. Like I feel like Dallas don't have somebody that's putting a, a straight flag in the city, and it doesn't matter about being an artist. Like music, okay, that's cool, that's one stepping stool. But I got a nonprofit. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm really trying to take this bitch over and take over the world. So I feel like it's just about letting everybody know that just keep shooting for the stars, chasing your dreams. Like anybody can do it. You know. Twenty one years old. Mm -hmm. You you were sharing that with me, yeah. uh, you know. I, I don't I, I don't know if the, I'm supposed to share that on camera, right? No, nah, you good, you good. You know, say, uh, I feel it's God given to be able to be in an opportunity, and I mean, to be able to have opportunities like you have right now at your age. Uh, your career started like you know, like I would consider a late bloomer. Yeah, like you know, it wasn't like you you've been recording since you were 13. Like I, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, your story kind of started with you recording kind of later on mm -hmm. and almost instantly after you started recording you got discovered yeah like yo like take me into that like just the 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 i don't know like how do you grasp that you know considering the fact that you know you just got in the game and it's like boom def jam wants to sign me you know what i mean <laughs> like man honestly it's crazy like even when you put it into that because it's like sometimes i don't really sit and soak in everything mm -hmm. that's happened in my life i kind of just be like i'm just grateful like i'm just lit and I feel like around that time, I made my first song when I was 15. It was with a homie from school. I was rapping. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, it was horrible. Like, you can go listen to it. We called ourselves the Fully Gang. And um, I was like, all right, cool. People around the school were singing a little bit. Then when I turned 16, D&D &D came around, which was love songs, basically. But it was like the first part of love songs. And I found the beat on YouTube. And I was like, all right, everybody like what I'm singing. Like, all right, I yeah. think this, the, you know, the school might really mess with this version of me. And so then time started passing by. Um, I started putting like probably a few more tracks on SoundCloud, recording with my dad and stuff. He had a studio built in the closet. And, um, you know, he always used to just tell me like, make music. Because I used to be in my mind, I grew up on mindless behavior in OMG girls. Mm. So I'm like, I need to be in a group. That's the only way I'm going to blow up if I'm in a group. Like, I feel like I... I used to doubt myself, like, I won't, my, myself won't be able to blow up. And so he used to just tell me, like, you know, just put your mind to it. You'll be able to achieve everything you want to. Got, what, love songs in the vault. <laughs> <laughs> I had, it was basically the same beat as D&D, just slowed it down and uh, re recreated it at my dad's apartment. Uh, didn't think much about it at all. Linked up with my cousin, played it for him. He's like, I got the chills, bro. This whole gonna be big. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right, we had a park smoking weed. Like, we were like, all right, like I, I you're high. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, none of my songs ain't blown up. Like, I just was always so doubtful. And so I give it probably a few months after that. Uh, I was chilling in the garage and uh got a call from Dev Jam and you know, they just wanted to sign me. Yeah, and I think from there you mentioned like uh, once they showed interest, you were a little skeptical in the beginning because you didn't know how how real it was. Yeah, I was so naive. I used to think that every artist, every <laughs> everybody in the industry had a blue check. Like I'm like, how are you A and R? You don't got no blue check. Yeah. Like I don't know you. You know what I'm saying? You know with Def Jam, <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. like, if I send you, bro, send me your birthday, send me your full name, I'm about to book tickets. So I was like, all right. Told my parents, they were for sure sketched out. They're yeah. like, who is this grown man talking about he's gonna fly you out to New York? I'm like, mama, I'm 18 now. If he sends some tickets, I'm get on the plane. Yeah. And I was going, of course, with my manager at the time. So it was like I was going by myself. And he sent it, and my life literally changed after that. 
There's so many things that I... Uh, that yeah, it's I wanna, missing parts. It's I, missing parts. There's so many <laughs> parts of this conversation I want to unpack right now, starting with, you mentioned that you were in a group and that you started recording at a certain age. What was your first artist name, though? Was it was it always Cash Page? Uh-uh. My first artist name was K-Blast. K-Blast. Yeah. And is there any music <laughs> that exists in the world right now that, uh, that has K-Blast on it? Is there something in SoundCloud that's just floating around right now? I feel like the Fooly Gang one might say K-Blast on it. Maybe. Or it's going to say just Cash. It's going to say one of those. But I didn't, I didn't come up with Cash Page until I started realizing that Cash was such a used name from everybody. Yeah. And I was like, all right, well, I know Cash. I made Cash mean kill all arrogance, stop hatred. I'm like, I need something else. And my middle name is Paige. My real name is DeKyler. Mm. Yeah. You mentioned your father. You mentioned him recording you. You mentioned him having a studio. Mm-hmm. Um, how important was his role in your life, aside from being a father, mm-hmm. into your development as an artist? Because if I'm not mistaken, he used to engineer music, correct? Yeah. My so- dad, he shot my first music video which was D&D. Um, he engineered, he produced, he did all that. Um, it was kind of just like seeing how it made him happy for me to get into music because, you know, I felt like I was living my dream like through him, I guess. Yeah, and vice versa. Yeah, vice living, versa, of course. He was living yours, uh, his through you as well. Mm-hmm. And, and then, you know, I just let me stop there because, you know, I have children. Mm-hmm. It's so, it's so, it's so important for f- fathers to play a part in their mm-hmm their kids, you know, in their kids' life, obviously, but to be able to know that he supported you to that degree within music, like, shout out to your dad. Ah, thank you. Salute to him, because, you know shout what I'm out, saying? Shout out Beats. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it takes a real man to do that, you know, mm-hmm. just so you know how fortunate you truly are for having that. Ah, thank you. And I know your your kids look up to you. Uh, they say, my yeah. daddy's a superstar. <laughs> they know you're a superstar. Well, I, I hope they do, right? I hope they do. <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, but you mentioned, so, the, the, you know, we talked about Def Jam, you talk about getting interest, and then, you know, I think shortly thereafter, you 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 link up with the A&R, you guys hit it off. You, you, it was more of a building a personal relationship. Yeah. It took a while for you to eventually sign to Def Jam, mm-hmm. and it was like a couple of months before you actually put ink to paper, and then mm-hmm. there was other labels that started courting you during that time period. I want to talk about you know, and we're not trying to down, you know, anybody, but no, of course. you mentioned management and you had management. And mm-hmm. whenever you started actually going into the direction of like talking to these labels, there was a lot of labels that showed interest in you, but you kind of felt like it fell off whenever they yeah. saw that your, your manager was not experienced yeah, or that he, you know, he wasn't as qualified to play the role of what mm-hmm. was needed at that level of you. What, what would you say about the importance of having proper representation at that juncture in your career. How, um, how much, how important was it? And at what point did it become like, okay, this has to shift? Um, so I'm a real big energy person. I felt like if, to start with the, the last part you just said, I knew it had to shift whenever I seen that certain things weren't happening for me because of this person was around me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when stuff, it stuff's all in a line and then you, it starts to, it's like outgrowing friends. You know what I'm saying? Like when you start linking up with your homies, you like, Man, all we do is smoke weed and eat food. Like <laughs> we don't even we don't go out. We don't go have even if it's just roller coasters. Even if it's just having a deep conversation. I just felt like you have to be aligned with the people that are in your life. And sometimes you won't be aligned forever. It yeah. might be just for that moment of your life. But I feel like that's what my my past uh man my first manager showed me. It was like he knew music for sure. He put me on the Brent Fires. He put me onto a lot of amazing artists. And um, he knew what he was talking about. It was just more so like, I think we just outgrew each other. And I don't think that any label really wanted to pursue me because they just didn't know what else I had going on, yeah. if that makes sense. Because I felt like what I used to get told was, oh, he sells himself more than he sells you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I used to be like, yeah. You know, I didn't really know what that meant. I was just yeah. like, I mean, he just letting you know what everything he's done. You know, I'm gotcha. just thinking that he's, Letting it be known that he has experience in something. But, um, you know, it doesn't come off that way to other people. But I wish him nothing but the best, you know? Yeah, I was, you know, I think it's important to have that conversation and to have that dialogue because a lot of times, you know, young aspiring artists that get in the game, specifically around here, they, they, they see someone like Cash Page. They see the success that you've had. They see all the festivals you've played and mm-hmm. all the great things that have happened for your career. And they're like, yeah, know what's really going on. Yeah, you know they're like, how? Right? <laughs> like, what's the what? What does that look like, right? What's the what's the roadmap to get there? Now, mm-hmm. before we dig a little deeper into that, mm-hmm. you mentioned artists. You mentioned starting at a young age. You mentioned 
some of the groups that you liked as a youngster, right? Mm -hmm. Who who would you consider your core musical influences that kind of really like made you say, you know what, this is what I want to do? Um, Drake, um, The Weeknd, Erykah Badu, SZA, and Nirvana. I Nirvana. Really, yeah, I really love rock music. People don't know that about me, but I'm like a rockhead, like wow. alternative rock, anything. Because I grew up playing Guitar Hero. So it's like <laughs> guitars and like anything that just sounds like lonerish type vibes or like, um, I put some to words, like Metallica. That's why my font for my tour is Metallica font. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. Like, that was a little, little <laughs> rock star vibe, you know what I mean? Yeah, like rock star slash R&B because it's like, I want to say people on a roller coaster. When you see me in shows, it's like I might have this vibe where I'm singing and everybody's in their feelings. And it's like, all right, it's the night show. We about to turn this bitch up now. And like, then, have you crowd surfed? Yeah, I always <laughs> crowd surf. You gonna see me crowd hey, surf on Sunday. Hey, that, that's, the, that's the mark of a rock star right there. You can't really be a rock star until you start crowd, crowd surfing, surfing, mosh pitting. Yeah. And I get in the mosh pit. Like, literally, I go down there with my security guard. I tell everybody to make a circle. Some of them don't really listen. Yeah. But I'm just like, man, at the end of the day, we're gonna jump. We're gonna have a great time. And I'm gonna make y'all feel like y'all are a part of the show for real. So now let's get back to mm -hmm. some of the stuff we were talking about, right? So you end up signing to Def Jam mm -hmm. and then it happens. Now I recall one of my first, uh, one of the first times you came across my radar, there was a tweet that surfaced that a lot of people were reposting and it was your, your perspective and your take on the music scene locally and specific about DFW. Oh yeah, I remember that. You know what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah. Right? I was you told looking... me whenever I said I didn't know any Dallas artists. Yeah, and I really I wanted... didn't though. You know, and I really wanted to go and bring that back up, but I couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. So um... I think this is why you probably can't find it because you deleted it. No, nah, no, nah, not even that. <laughs> I probably did delete it, but not even that. It was more so whenever I was in that interview, mind you, I'm high as hell. Yeah. I'm not thinking about nobody else at that moment. It's my time to shine. Just how I respect somebody else going up there and having their moment. You know what I'm saying? I don't expect for somebody to mention me, mind you. And I didn't, I, I literally could not think what artists. Yes, I've done these local events with y'all, but also I wasn't really, I was 18, yeah. bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like y'all 30, 20, something like I wasn't really there all the way. So it's just like now, of course, I know I know a good yeah. few. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody, it's so many talented artists out here, and I'm still getting put on to them. But also, whenever I seen people trying to get on my ass about me not saying nothing to them, they had a local artist event the next day. I popped out. Oh wow! Yeah, I popped out, and people won't tell you that, but I popped out, <laughs> and they didn't have that same ass energy. They well, see, was shot to me, shot to me, <laughs> we turned, bro, my gosh, cash, you're here. I'm like, yeah, like, cause y'all talking shit and don't really. First off, I'm about that. Let me just start by saying that I ain't trying to like on no tussle shit. I'm just saying like I'm, I'm a real person at the end of the day. Yeah. Like inform me, educate me. I will never want to come off ignorant. So it's just like if I don't know any artists in the city, cool. Let me go ahead and pop out and show my face and see who's, you know what I'm saying, who's in the city. See, because I was asking you off camera a little while ago, you know, if you had ever really just gone through the circuit, right? Because mm -hmm. there's like a, there's a circuit that a lot yeah. of guys go through, like the open mic circuit, the local show circuit. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm not knocking it. You know, I, I come from being an artist turned promoter. So as a promoter, I've promoted a lot of the talent from here. Mm -hmm. So I'm very familiar with, with that. And, you know, I do feel like there's a, there's a roadmap. There's a, mm -hmm. you, you can only do it for so long before it's Yeah, like, and they don't pay. Before you pivot, before you do something else. Well, you know, and and it's 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 about, in my opinion, even you, know, you do have to pay your dues a little bit because of course because you want to learn the craft. Yeah, and I feel like, of course, like whenever I was doing shit, it was free. I didn't mind that. I'm well, talking about I was... whenever I started getting signed and yeah. everybody wanted to book me. I'm like, you can at least give me five hundred, at least yeah. give me two hundred, three hundred. Everybody's like, man, we, I know you though, bro. Like yeah. all that, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I don't care. At the end of the day, like I'm getting paid from other people. I'm getting paid to do other shows, even though it's my first time doing it. Yeah, like still show a little bit of love, you know. Well, I think the question I had more so wasn't even that. It was more so like, did you? Did you what did you even go through that circuit? Because it seems, at least from my perspective, mm -hmm. that the moment you started really creating music, you know, it didn't take long for yeah. it to catch fire. And I, I mean, I'm telling you, that's God given, because that doesn't Thank happen you. for the average artist, especially in, not just here in general. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're fortunate for being able to be put, be in that situation, but when it finally starts happening, you know, like 
I don't. Were you part of any of that circuit? Were you part of any of the the underground scene? Was that yeah. you know what I mean? Like I would say for sure, Tunes World. I don't know if you know who Tune is. Yeah, yeah, I know. You. She was throwing a lot of events. I was on Tunes World. Um, majority of all her shows, and um, I did one show or two shows for Vibes Texas. Okay, and that was pretty much it. Like and it was just it. really house parties, and, and then it was like yeah. boom to the roof, yeah, to the moon. My bad, to the moon. That's yeah. to the moon. <laughs> and uh, but I say that to say. I feel like there's this perception and this perspective that there's only one way to do this, right? Like, uh, oh, you have to do this and you have to do that. I'm going to, hey, different strokes mm -hmm. for different folks. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like everybody has their own path. And, you know, I think you've proven, at least from my perspective, and kudos to you that oh, thank you. you could do it a whole nother way. Yeah, because we all not built the same and we mm -hmm. all don't have the same journey. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like what God puts you on earth for is what you're put on earth for. That's your purpose. That's what you're meant to do. So it's like with you, like you probably have so many different purposes in life mm -hmm. and you haven't even fulfilled all of them because you're still living. And I feel like a lot of people need to understand that. Like I can be doing music today. I can probably do modeling tomorrow and probably do whatever. It's just yeah. like about just doing you, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And figuring it out. And I feel like it's it's never no cheat code or no like book to this life shit. Like we all trying to figure it out. I feel at times people, and this isn't just the music industry. Yeah. But I feel within the music industry, it's pretty prominent where, you know, like, if you don't put X amount of time in or if you don't put in X amount of years, like, you're not qualified. And it's like, nah. that's ridiculous. <laughs> you know what you know what you need is you need to have the proper amount of talent, mm -hmm. great attitude, and a great team around you. Hell yeah. And as long as those things check off, like, all those things can happen as soon as you walk in the game. Facts. You know what I mean? And some people just have it. Like, I feel like it's crazy when people say that. And I felt like at that time when people attacked you, they felt like, I felt like they were attacking you as if you didn't know the history. But it's like, why falter? Like, that's not like... Yeah, like, no disrespect, you... but it's like, bro, like, my bad, I don't know where Trap Boy Freddie lives. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? Like, like I'm sorry. You know, and there's no yeah. disrespect to him. Hey, you reached out to him for it. And he didn't really care. But it was just more so like, my bad, I didn't know that. I yeah. think he from Fort Worth. You know, I probably still don't really know, even yeah. from that past situation, because it's like, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about myself. Correct. As you, you know? should be. Yeah. As you should be. And this is the, the thing. Your, your obligation is to you and your career. So, I, you know, I wanted to clarify that because I felt like at that time when I saw that, I was like, man, they're kind of giving her a bad rap. And it's like, for what? Like, you know what I mean? If anything, this is one of the few artists that we have that's coming not only out of DFW, but out of Texas that's having a very successful run. We should support that. No, thank you. You know what I'm saying? And we should support that. No, it's real that. shit. It's like, I support them. And, you know, it's like, as time goes on, like, I'm, like I said, this is my first week for real, like, even getting into the Dallas scene like that. Yeah. So it's like, as I start to continue to do that and build up, like, people are going to see my face more. It's just like, you have to give me time. Like I said, like, I'm not trying to use my age for nothing, but I'm still young. I don't really know a much, much history about Dallas artists. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm pretty sure it was OGs, legends, like, way before me. I know that. I know a few songs, but I don't really know that Well, much. the beauty of it is, is that your, your story is being written now. And as your story is being written now, you'll eventually be part of that history mm -hmm. and not only will you be part of that history but i think you're gonna you're gonna really genuinely appreciate how much history there really is not just here but all across dfw and uh -huh. throughout texas you know mm -hmm. what i mean like so that's that's dope now soundtrack to my life yeah let's talk about the project you know i think that's uh obviously you know this is a project that i feel though you're young it's a coming of age project mm -hmm. obviously like let's talk about it you know how would you sum up the project what do you feel about the project um, for sure, I feel like production. I'm a production head. I love amazing beats. I love when it feels like it's taking you somewhere. Like to say what you said, some like you know, coming of age, teenage fever. I think I was 19 when I made that project, turning 20. So that was still my teenage years, and I feel like now I'm 21. I've experienced a lot of different things at this young age, and I feel like you'll be able to hear it and be able to relate. Plus, visually see it as you hear it, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They like close your eyes, you're like, oh, I know exactly. They get, it takes you somewhere. Yeah. Like, yeah. I got this song on there called TMZ, and it's like made from real events, like my 20th birthday. It was around COVID. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> I threw a crazy party, and it got put on TMZ. And they were like, oh, Cash Page starts COVID. This is that, like, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> and I was like, man, fuck that. And it really had me in a Debbie Downer because I had people in my comments like, I hope you die, bro. Like, this is that because it was around the time when you know what I'm saying like yeah, Kobe yeah, was really but I'm like damn yeah, it's my yeah. birthday like you know what I'm saying like I ain't really trying to 
if you wanted to pop out to my birthday party and you knew you were at risk of probably getting COVID, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I was just on us. I don't think nobody was really thinking about that at that time. Yeah, that so time it's like, was crazy. Yeah, right? and everybody was outside. Nobody can act like they was not outside. Well, so, I mean, at least in Texas. Texas was wild. Yeah, <laughs> like going crazy. And so I had made the song the next day called TMZ. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I think it's important too. Like you mentioned that time and I feel like you know, that took such a psychological toll on people because Hell they weren't yeah. able to go out there. With that being said, though, you know, you being an artist and you being expressive in this album, I mean, well, it's not its not actually considered an album. It's an EP, correct? That's an album. We're going to make it an album. Oh, we're going to make it an album. <laughs> I, don't, I, I had to choose my wording. I was like, I was making, because, you know, I was making the flyer. You know what I mean? No, you good. It's an I was, album. You I can was going to put album, album release concert, but I was like, release concert. You know what I mean? Like, you good. You know, uh, but soundtrack to my life, you know, um, when I when I first saw the title, mm-hmm. I felt it was you know of course seeing the Dallas stuff you know what I mean you know I had really felt like okay she's connecting mm-hmm. and then I felt I, I'm, I haven't heard the project in its entirety mm-hmm. yet so I can't say but as I started seeing I was like I wonder I wonder where this is gonna take me because like when I see that title I'm like this is gonna be deep mm-hmm. this is gonna be deep like you're gonna you're gonna give us depth and the, yeah. la- the layers of who Cash Page is everything you know who Cash Page is um I mentioned the psychological toll that COVID took mm-hmm. but just in general being an artist how much of a psychological toll does that take to be an artist to be in the music industry to be in the entertainment industry I know that we you know I, I'm, I advocate for mental health often you know mm-hmm. like so I wanted to kind of get your perspective just on being a young artist in this industry I would say, and how you know how you how you deal with it. Um, I would say sometimes I kind of just gotta eat it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like it's a lifestyle you ask for, and it's only gonna get bigger. I always tell myself, and some people might might be like, "Girl, you tripping? You crazy as hell?" I'm gonna be as big as Michael Jackson. Like, I don't want to laugh. I'm not laughing. No, at I know nothing. that, but it's, no, I'm I get not what you're it's just like the confidence. You're like, y'all be as big as Michael Jackson. For real, I am. And people gonna look back on this interview one day and they're gonna be like, damn, she, she meant that it. shit. <laughs> she caught it. Yeah. So it's just like, like I said, it's about having that confidence in yourself. Uh, Self belief. Yeah. Like Absolutely. saying, yeah, because like I said, I used to be really doubtful. Sometimes I'm still doubtful. Even when I put out the song "Doubting Me," it's like, bitch, you doubt yourself sometimes too. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like because. Whenever you're doing the impossible, it's like, how am I pulling this together? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, is this out of luck or is this really, am I really God's favorite? You know, and it's like really soaking it in. Like, nah, bro, like you're really blessed. And so I feel like having that part of me, it's like it keeps my mental sane, but also dealing with so many different people every single day. Like, that's what draws me crazy. Because it's like yeah. I said, I'm energy based. So it's like you meet somebody with weird ass energy. You meet somebody with dark energy. You meet somebody that just lost their lost soul. Yeah. You're like, me? I'm the type of person, I don't believe I got to mess with anybody to go to the top. Like yeah. in a sense of, you can be the biggest music exec in the world. If I don't fuck with you and I don't fuck with your spirit, I will not work with you. I do not care. If you're the biggest producer. I, I don't want to work with you. It's, it's good to keep... Um keep that mentality and stay true to your your belief and you know like you mentioned self-belief as well believing in yourself because what's meant for you is gonna happen exactly like you, you know? can't it's like somebody telling you man honest like like if wayne was to come in here oh man you know i don't want to fuck with Lil wayne like that. i ain't like his energy but i need i need Lil wayne to go to the top like yeah. i'm just using for example by the way but it's just like no like you're yeah. gonna go to the top regardless it's gonna you know what regardless. i'm saying yeah. like Regardless of everybody is great in their own way. So it's just like know that about yourself and know that about where you are. Like, you know what I'm saying? Where you're trying to take your career yeah. and just live. You mentioned, you know, these moments that you've had. Is there any, well, there's two moments in specific that I want to know. A, the moment that you knew this was what you were going to do for a living. Like you'd be like, okay, you know what? I'm I'm really good at this, which may have been whenever you were smoking weed at the park with Mm-hmm. Your, your 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 cousin or your friend and they're like yo you gonna blow up mm-hmm. and then the second part was was what moment was the oh shit moment this is really fucking happening moment was it like being in front of thousands and thousands of people at a show or what was it like mm-hmm. so those two moments one and two all right so it's like i want to say that moment has hit me yet but it hasn't like it hasn't i feel like maybe in london kind of yeah like because they love music differently 
And they were like screaming. Like I was like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Like they were like grabbing me and shit. Yeah. Like trying to kick like they were doing a lot. And I was like, oh, like low key, you know what I'm saying? I might like, be a big artist, you know? Like I feel like it kind of hit me that day, but also it's like in my mind, I'm still pushing forward. I still got so many different things to do. So I'm still waiting for that moment. And that moment might hit me on Sunday. I might cry on stage. You might. That's what I'm saying. Like I said, it's my first time ever even having a show for real. So So the moment when the other moment was when you knew that this was what you were gonna do. Like, what what moment was that when you're like, yeah, okay, this is this is for real. I'm finna I'm finna go all in. During COVID, really? Yeah, because I felt like whenever I was popping off and love songs blew up for me, COVID hit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I was literally at the peak of everything, and it was like lockdown. So in my mind, I'm like, damn, like mm. this is when I'm supposed to be my biggest thing like I was supposed to headline Twitter at South by Southwest I was supposed to do Jambalaya like so many different crazy shows and festivals in the year of 2020 I, I didn't get that. yeah I didn't get to do none of them they all got canceled yeah. so I feel like in that moment in my mind I'm like damn like I'm like am I still gonna be an artist like yeah. you know is this not supposed to happen for me and Opportunity started coming in and do virtual performances. Rolling Loud was one of the first virtual performances. Yeah, I, I, I want to say you did Rolling Loud. I want to. Mm -hmm. I, I thought you did the actual Rolling Loud, didn't you? I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's what but I'm the during that when uh, COVID, I did uh, only the uh, virtual one. So mm -hmm. it was like when I did that, I was like, damn, like it's still opportunities floating around for me in the midst of me thinking my life was fucked up. And I feel like in that moment, I was like, no, nah, I'm in for this shit because these people really fuck with me. And they don't even know who the fuck I am. Like, seeing them in a live stream, like, bro, this girl's dope, bro. This is, I'm like, damn. Because I used to seek a lot of validation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I needed people to tell me, oh, you hard, you hard. Especially yeah. around that time, because I was so on, you know, yeah. so hard on myself. I'm like, damn, am I really hard? You yeah. know? So that was the moment for sure. You, you dropped the single, uh, Doubting Me, mm -hmm. right? Soundtrack to my life. The video was literally the soundtrack to your life. Yeah. It was like uh, like all this montage of baby cash, mm -hmm. you know, all the way up to current cash. Mm -hmm. Whose idea was it? Who had the footage? Obviously, mom or dad, who had the footage? And how was that all pieced together? Whose concept was that? Like, I thought that was a, an appropriate visual for the song. Uh, thank you. Um, me and my dad had thought about it. Um, mm -hmm. He's the one that put it together and had the footage slash use some of my videographer from tours footage and mix it together. Um, I was just like, just makes sense. You know, like doubting me, what else kind of video can I make in, yeah. instead of a documentary style type video? You yeah. know, it's like showing my development of being a baby and it's still going to be many, you know, many more videos that I shoot that are kind of like that, but it's like, it's a journey. Yeah. And I feel like for me to come back and to drop a music this year, it was like, I want to show people that like, like the real side of me. I feel like a lot of people don't know, still don't know like who I am or what I represent or, you know, anything about me. So I feel like me getting out of my shell and really allowing people to come into my space. So is that what you want people to take from the project? Like, yeah. Like, okay, now I get a really a sense of who she is. Yeah, it's, it's bigger than a love song. It's like, yeah, and sure. thank God for love songs. You know what I'm saying? Like that song, shit, it's blowing up on TikTok right now, yeah. which is fucking weird. <laughs> like it blows up the week of my drop. You know what I'm saying? So... Um, I just want people to know that it's more than your biggest hit. You know, it's it's an actual catalog. And I know I have a, a, a true, real fan base, and I appreciate the fuck out of them. I just think that, like, it, I don't know. I feel like that song took a huge toll on me because I didn't want people to know me from just that, you know? So uh, whenever you go out and uh, you perform, do, is it one of those things where like, ah, I really don't want to perform this song? <laughs> I used to be like that. I used to be like that. You got to embrace it though. That's, that, that's, that's, sure. that's the record, you know what I mean? But, I, but I know you want to be bigger than the record. You're more than the record. You have more to offer than the record. Yeah, and so it's like, it used to be like that. And then whenever I started doing more shows, then I started seeing people like sing like other records or yeah. like being like, yo, before what? Why did you perform Frank Ocean? I'm like, damn, like, you know yeah, that record? You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I felt like that's what got me more confident in like being on stage more too. Cause man, I used to be like, bro, I'm like, love song, love song, make sure you're love. I'm yeah. like, damn, like, all right. But um, nah, song's a blessing. And I feel like it's all about dropping more music too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, like I only I just, dropped I, two projects. You know, I I, uh, I was at a TCU party several years ago, and mm -hmm. this is around the time Post Malone first got on the scene. The White and, Iverson. And all he had was White Iverson, 
I need to perform White Iverson three times that Damn. night. Damn. Three times that night. White Iverson again. Like, <laughs> encore, it encore, please. He brought it back. So I was like, oh, man. They're like, oh, Cash, you did love songs three times? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I've only... Man, it used to be... I used to be mad at the song so much. I would only perform half of that hoe at my shows. Like, dead ass. I wouldn't even get to second verse. I'd be like, all right, cool. We're going to 6-4. Like, I'm like, fuck that. And then everybody was like, bro, you got to perform the whole song. And so then I stopped performing the whole song. And I don't know. We keep on talking about performing. We keep on talking about being on stage, but we haven't talked about you going on tour. Yeah. You got your headlining tour coming up, top of 2023, which is crazy to say 2023 because <laughs> I would have thought we were like the Jetsons by now, you know, <laughs> in the sky. Hey, damn near. Uh, you know, it's how flying. <laughs> <laughs> so 2023 headlining tour, your first time all the way on the road, just you. Uh, how exciting is that? What are the feelings and the thoughts going into it? And what can the people expect from the tour? <laughs> um, the people can expect a lot of crazy ass visuals, a crazy lighting, um, growth in me, you know, seeing different performances each time and just different, I don't know, cause it's like, you know, artists, first show you're gonna be a little bit shy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You start doing a couple more shows, you start getting like more, you know what I'm saying, in your head. And I feel like for this to be my first headlining show, I'm about to see people sing word for word every fucking song that I've ever put out. Yeah. So that's gonna be something that's gonna like be like, wow, to me, because I've never experienced that before. You know, so I feel like just experienced a lot of emotions, um, a lot of great moments, a meet and greets, y'all gonna get to hang out with me, um, have a lot of food. Have a lot of food. <laughs> <laughs> have a lot of food and have a lot of fun. Yo, what's your favorite food, Cash? Chicken. Chicken. Yeah, I, <laughs> I like chicken tenders. Chicken tenders. Chicken See, tenders. I knew I liked you. Oh, you know saying. what I'm saying? That's all I eat. That's chicken all I Chicken tenders, eat. <laughs> jalapenos. Like, right. gotta be spicy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what about you? I, my favorite food is lasagna because okay. I was a, I was a fan of Garfield growing up. But, uh, okay. But, I, you know, usually I eat chicken tenders. You know, I go, <laughs> that's what I'm like, oh, they got chicken tenders out. Chicken, 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 you know what I mean? Facts. What about you? You childish. Like, nah, I eat everything. I eat sushi. I eat all that shit. But put Yo, me on an island. Give me some chicken. So before we wrap up, you know, uh, I did want to talk about, you know, just the the lifestyle of being uh, in the entertainment industry. Obviously, we recently lost Takeoff. Hell yeah, rest you know, in peace, take off, man. We Rocket recently, man. <laughs> we recently lost PNB Rock. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of been an ongoing situation with, you know, musicians kind of being in the industry. And obviously, as I see you rocking your jewelry, you know, I don't know if you ever have second thoughts of that because I think that's such a it, it's such a delicate subject, but at the same mm -hmm. time, it's such a reality that we live in now. Hell where yeah. Just as hard as you work to have it, someone's going to work just as hard to take it from you. Mm -hmm. Does it ever cross your mind? Not to put that negative energy no, in No, it's not negative energy. It's, it's, it's like more awareness. Be, yeah, being aware, you know, like, and do you have people around you that are just like, you know, hey, Cash, like, yeah, my friends tuck that people chain like, in a little bit, you know? So, the thing is, whenever, when I was telling you earlier, like, when I would pop out and I have my jewelry on, sometimes I'll be looking around like, damn, like, I need security. I feel as if from PNB situation and takeoff situation, which should have never happened, for Absolutely one. Absolutely not. I feel like it uh, it allowed everybody to be more like, all right, like we need to take this shit serious. You know, like it's, it's fun when you're an artist. You know what I'm saying? Yo, mind, you're just like, bro, I'm just going out to have fun with my friends. I bought this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, why can't I wear it? But also it's just like, even without the jury, you got to understand precious cargo, you know? Yeah. And so it's just like about having people around you that's going to protect you and having, you know... Your best interest at heart. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Having security, having, you know, like, being in, uh, you know, great environments as well, you know? Yeah. For sure. Well, Cash, look, I appreciate your time. You know, I know you said you're going to be as big as Michael Jackson, but at very least, mm -hmm. at very least, I need you to be as big as Dirk Nowitzki because, you know, Dirk about to get that statue in front of the, the, the Mavericks arena right there at the American Airlines. Facts. And, and, and he got uh, that restaurant that's opening. Oh, yeah, we need we need a, we need a cash page. We need oh, that's happening. It's going to be it. it's my mom. My mom, she's, you know a, she's an amazing cook. I'm going to make sure we you got that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we got And, you know, I, look, I see you going on to do great things with your career, starting with this new project. Oh, thank you. I could see you in movies. I could see you doing thank TV you. shows. You know, you got great I think my, my next thing is modeling. You want to do modeling? You yeah, because I'll say Beyonce was the first person to ever put me on that shit. Like, when I did the Icy Park campaign. Mm. It was me, her, Gucci Mane, and Hailey Bieber. 
everybody was like, who the fuck is this girl? Like, <laughs> we know everybody else. Who the fuck is Cash Page? And she really believed in me. And I really enjoyed that. And it, might be the, it might be the Texas connector. It might be the fact that you're just God-given talented. You know, like, yeah, I, thank you. I've seen a lot of the people that you've worked with. And, you know, some of the people that you've worked with, like, those are names that people can't take lightly. You know what I'm saying? Especially, like, on that level. So like again, yeah, you know, you. It, it's God given. You know, I was I was listening to your music on Spotify and as I was just like going through your catalog, I'm like, dang, you know, there's you got some shit. You know, like for, you know, you gassing. No, I'm not gassing because you're like you, you got to think like it, it, you talk about 18 to 21. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a three year window. You know, of course, you know, next year will be 22. But I'm just saying, like, damn, like that's. Hella impressive. Nah, thank you. So kudos to you. Nah, kudos to you and thank you for having me on no, your show. I'm so excited about the project, so excited about the show, so excited about the tour. I look forward to continue to build with you. This is Cash Page. Y'all make sure to stream the project. Sound, soundtrack to my life, I almost mm -hmm. butchered it. You good. And, and you know, you make sure to support her on her upcoming tour. Anything else you got to say, Cash? Oh, man, just keep being y'all and keep shooting for the stars because you never know when your life going to change. It can be tomorrow, it can be tonight, it can be next month, next year, whenever. But just, no, stay consistent and stay persistent because we all know life's full of surprises, but you got it. And one last thing, can you can you show the the the, the tat, right? The, the Dallas tat, you have the tat on your head? Oh, there she goes. There you go. Just so you know, don't ever question it. Don't this question is, it. Don't this question is it. This is cash page. Nothing beats experience. And you already know we out. Swag. <laughs>